Hi guys, PJ here. Today I am working on a 2004 Peugeot 206. As you can see, it's got the factory fitted radio. So I'm going to be removing the factory fitted radio and installing an aftermarket, in this case Pioneer unit, um, and wiring it to the fuse box so that it goes on and off with the ignition correctly. If you've already tried to fit a radio into one of these cars and you've just plugged in the connectors, you'll notice that when you turn the key off, it stays on for a sort of 10 minutes or so. That's quite normal. We're going to wire it so that it goes off straight away with the ignition. Now, if your vehicle's got steering wheel controls, so it's got like the volume to turn the volume up and down on your steering wheel, you're going to need an adapter. I've got one here, and this one's made by Auto Leads, and there's the part number CP2-PSA41. And this is a steering wheel interface to make the volume controls and other things work on your steering wheel with your aftermarket radio. So, first things first, you're going to need to know where your fuse box is. And if you've not looked at your owner's manual, it is just here. There's a little twist thing here that you turn. So you can pop yourself something in there to turn that. Let me grab something for you. There we go. Just twist. And... Off it comes, there we go, there's your fuse box, of which we'll be using an accessory circuit fuse for an ignition supply to the new radio. First things first, we've got to get the old radio out. Um, stand to stand, press eject before you do that, make sure you've got no CDs in there, because let's face it, once you've removed it, it's going to be a pain to get the disc out. And you're going to need a couple of release keys. Now the type in question are the U-shaped ones, they're very common, they're available from pretty much any car shop. Or you can get them off eBay, Amazon, they're normally about a pound, so no big deal. Very, very simple to use. Push them in the slot until they sort of clunk a bit, like so. You've just heard that go clunk. You're going to need uh, both hands. I mean, I'm holding the camera here with one hand, so I will have to cut this bit. Basically, what you're going to do is spread them very slightly. So put a bit of pressure on each one, each side, and pull at the same time. So spread them and pull, and the unit will pop forward. Before we do that, however, cover your gear lever over. This particular model of car has got the silver chromey gear knob on it and obviously you wouldn't want to damage that so we're going to cover that over with a little bag and we're going to put some cardboard or foam or something here because the rear of the radio is steel and obviously steel will scratch plastic. We don't want any damage to the trim or the fascia so we're just going to cover everything over. So there we go, we've pushed them apart, pulled the radio, it's come out, you see the spring clips on each side here that the release key shoves in, covered everything over shove the gear, the gear lever back so we've got a bit more space like i say you don't want to scratch anything at this point you can normally remove your release keys just pop them out just click there we go put them safe sorry about the background noise there just let me shut the door for a minute there we go a bit better unfortunately i have to do this work now quite a noisy road not ideal but i don't pick and choose where the jobs are done unfortunately there we go so radio out your aerial is on a push fit connector and we'll need a little stubby aerial adapter for your new radio. They're about an inch long, bayonet fix. I'll show you one shortly when I unpack one and give you the little part number for it. These are standard ISO connectors. So in other words, these will plug into 99% of all aftermarket radios. However, the only problem is, like I say, your radio won't go on and off with the ignition straight away. There's a delay. So what we do to get these out is push the tab. There's a little tab here and a little tab here. Just push them in and pull. Again, we're going to need both hands once on the radio, so I'll quickly cut to those being removed. There we go, quickly removed. Take this whole unit, put that safely out of the way. We're not going to be needing that at all anymore. If yours is one of the slightly older Peugeots, you'll notice it's got sort of a, a semicircle in each side. Now, if it is the older style, you can actually get a plastic little spacer trim to fill it up. It's not needed, but it just sort of tidies it up slightly. This is the later version, and it's got the original standard hole. This will fit on any old radio, no problem at all. We don't need any adapters on this whatsoever. If we move over to the steering wheel control adapter, which is here, you'll notice we've got a couple of wires. I'm getting focused there for you guys, sorry about that. This bit, the big bit, plugs on to these. You can't get them wrong because the pins are offset, so any the black one will only fit in one and the white one will only fit in one. Basically, you've got one for power and one for speakers. That's the difference. Now, the other end will plug into the adapter that comes with your new aftermarket radio. And then there's a little fly cable that comes off. There we go. That plugs into the box of tricks to make the steering wheel controls work. This one, like so. It's got a 
connector on each end. So a large connector goes to this, small connector goes to the adapter cable that's supplied. I will just say this about steering control adapters. Due to vehicle age and wear and tear, sometimes these simply don't work. So, okay, so just be warned, there is a chance you'll plug all this in and it won't work. It's just the way it is. It, depends, it works on resistance and if there's wear in the uh, resistance on the original manufacturer's controls, these things don't pick it up and it doesn't work. However, hopefully this one will. As you can see on the instruction manual, it lists all the cars that it works on. I don't know if I can get that in focus, it's a bit small, there we go. And it shows you the dip switch configuration, like so. This one being configured already for, well, one, two and six is up. So that's this list of vehicles here. And there's a different showing you here what stalk that works, which is the one on this vehicle. You also have secondary dip switches across here, which are for whichever make or brand of radio. Sorry, get my back in focus. Uh, you are fitting. So we are fitting a Pioneer. So if we look at Pioneer, I'll get you them all in shot there. So in case you've lost your instructions, there we go. We want dip switch number four to be up. Yeah. And all the rest down. So we need to flick all those down. You can do this with a little screwdriver if you fiddly with it like I am. There we go. So that's now set to match that, which is Pioneer. Next up, you'll need the little lead that comes with it, which is this one. Now, depending on brand of radio, depends on what plug you use on the end. There we go. So, some, some radios, like Sony, use a jack plug to plug into the radio to get the steering control feed. Some radios just use a bare wire. A lot of Kenwoods use a bare wire, and you just crimp it to the wire that comes out the back of the Radical Market radio that says steering wheel control. The other end simply plugs into here okay now don't plug this into the radio first connect the cable up to the manufacturer's wiring loom first so that it can light up and get its memory so it knows which car it's working on okay so what we're going to do is connect a few bits up and i'll run a power supply to the fuse box and update you when i've done that very shortly as if by magic on the video it'll be seconds but for me about 15 minutes Right guys, quick update. We're down at the fuse box and we're going to run the ignition power supply. Now you're only going to have to do this if you are not using the steering wheel control interface that I'm using. Okay, so the interface that I'm using will actually run this bit here. If you're not running one of those, you're going to need to do this, okay? If you are, then that interface will provide an ignition switch power and you don't need to bother, okay? So first of all, with your ignition off, you're going to get your test meter, like so or one of the little screwdrivers that lights up when you press press the uh, the end onto something. So what we're going to do is tap the end of the fuse, like so, zero, and then turn the ignition on and see if it reads a power supply. So ignition on, touch the end of the fuse, there you go, 12.3, 12.28, yep, 12 volts, so that's the ignition switched fuse. Make sure you only use an accessory circuit, such as um, cigarette lighter, that type of thing. Don't use anything for ECU, ABS, airbags or anything like that. This particular car, the way it's configured, I'm going to be using the red one here. But bear in mind that the car fuse box layout may differ depending on what country it's sold in, what spec it is, what model, what options. This particular one is one of the little convertible 206s, but shouldn't really make any difference. Um, so basically now we're going to get what's called a fuse spur which is one of these things now you get these off ebay or amazon they're about a pound maybe two pounds maximum and they're a doubler socket so this fuse here will run the radio and this gap here is where you put this fuse so you take this fuse out of the fuse box pop it in there and shove that in the original socket okay you want a 10 amp fuse ideally in here um, this was just for demonstration purposes. So 10 amp to run the radio, which is a red fuse, and then your fuse you pull out of there, which is actually also a 10 amp in this case, uh, goes in there. So just plug it in, and then follow your power cable. Obviously you're gonna tuck it round here, up through here, and bring it out to the radio slot here. And then put a connector on the end of it, and connect it to the red cable here. So unplug this. No, too tight. Unplug it, it's on a bullet connector. And plug your red cable that you took from the fuse box into here. This is the cable that comes with 
the radio when you buy it new. So that connector there goes into the radio and you'll be connecting the red power cable from the fuse box into this. Okay, so like I say, I can't unplug it with one hand, it's been, been tricky. But uh, in effect, you would have that power cable connected to there, but this unplugged and left unplugged. Hold on. Like so. And leave the other bit unplugged. Yeah? That's your power supply, so the radio goes on and off with the ignition key. I won't be needing this because of using the adapter that I've got, but I just thought I'd show you anyway. So if you've got the adapter, forget all this bit. If you haven't, do this. Moving on. So back to the radio. Like I say, this cable comes with it. Okay, we've plugged it in. There, look, it's on a little click connects, no problem. There's your a cable that runs your steering controls. Click it in nicely. There's your fly off cable with your box of tricks to make everything work. And what we need to do is just plug this back in because what I showed you a minute ago doesn't apply, like I say, if you're using one of these. So you can connect that back up, which, yep, you can laugh if you want, can't do that one handed. Oh, yes, can. Years of practice. Right, so your radio will come with a cage and a front surround. We'll click the front surround, keep that tidy out of the way. Take the face plate off if you want as well, save it again scratched. Slide the cage off, like so. Slide the wires through the cage, pop the cage in the hole. Once the cage is in and your cables are all fed through, worth noting is this particular radio is Bluetooth, so it's got a microphone cable as well. Now, with this being a convertible, um, basically I've fed the cable through and stuck the microphone here in the very centre of the steering cowl and took the cable down and out the way. Reason being, if I was to put it, uh, for example, here in the corner where I'd normally put them, when you have the roof down, the buffeting noise basically kills the microphone. You won't hear absolutely anything at all. The, the, the person on the other end of the phone call won't be able to hear you. So on convertibles, put it low down where your dashboard is. The dashboard will sort of shield the airflow from hitting the microphone to a degree and it should work nicely. Now, obviously convertibles are really noisy, so you're gonna to have to try and error that, but generally speaking, I always put them here, nice and low down out of the way. Try and get it centralized because there's nothing more annoying than driving along and seeing that thing slightly off center and clean the plastic with an alcohol wipe before you stick it on with the sticky pad that is supplied because otherwise if you've got dashboard cleaner on it won't stick so anyway back to the cage all we're going to do is twist some of the little lugs like so there we go a couple each side just to make sure it stays put like so just a couple just to keep it in I mean it's not really anti-theft because let's face it if they're going to steal it they don't care if they damage your car to get it out right so that's in now we're going to get all our cables we're going to connect up this bit steering control adapter okay so what we're going to do with that is uh, just connect the cable up I'll show you when I've when I've done it going to the aerial We've plugged our adapter in, just clicks in. It's This particular one's made by Connects 2 and the part number, as you can see there, is CT27AA01. Okay, again, eBay, Amazon for this type of thing. Just push fit, nice and simple. We've tidied up the cable quickly, so we've taped it all up so nothing can get trapped when we shove it into the car. Yeah. And the connectors I was on about are now plugged in. The microphone on this particular radio is a smaller one. It's 2.5mm jack plug. And the steering control adapter is a 3.5mm jack plug, so you can't get them mixed up, and they are labelled on the back of this particular radio. They may not be on the brand of radio you choose, so just pay attention to that. Sony, for example, use 3.5mm jack plugs for both, and it's easy to get them wrong way around, and then the radio does really weird things. So if you've got a Sony radio, you've installed it, and it's doing weird things, you've got these two the wrong way around. Right, so plug your power in, don't forget to plug your aerial in. Yeah, and basically you're going to tuck all this back out of the way so it's not interfering in any way. Tuck it down out of the way, slide the radio into the slot, but don't lock it in. Leave it ajar, and then we'll test the radio. So we've got the radio in. Yeah, we've tucked everything nicely out of the way. Pop your key in. Turn the ignition on. Hopefully it'll fire up within a second. There you go. Pioneer lock. Select your language. Set it all up, etc. Which is good. 
so it's now working yeah with the adapter that we've got in obviously we'll continue the setup and test the the volume control on it so uh, just turn off click everything together There we go, uh, just briefly we've had to start the car because it kicked into economy mode, I'm sure if you've got a Peugeot you know what that is when the little display there says economy mode. So the car is running at the moment, radio working as you can see, you can hear the noise in the background and if we test the steering controls, find them. But she's got six. She's got six, and f they're, she's coming in with five of them today to talk about. There you go. Steering controls nicely working. At this point, you know everything's good. You've tuned your radio stations in. Your steering controls are working. If they're not, then you may well have wearing the steering wheel interface, like I was saying, and you could revert back to the other wiring system I showed you, to the fuse box, and save yourself some money on a steering control interface. Or try a different brand. Connects 2 makes steering control interfaces. I generally have more luck with those, so uh, you could possibly try a Connects 2 brand from, like I say, Amazon or somewhere. So switch off, take your key out, put your fuse box cover back on, pop the radio in, which I'll do now. Should hear it click into place. There you go. That's locked into place now. Get your plastic trim that it comes with it. These normally click nicely into place, can be a bit fiddly. Sometimes you have to take the face off to make them fit. And there we go guys, that is a fit and aftermarket radio with steering wheel controls in a Peugeot 206. Now if you've got any questions regarding this vehicle or any other, pop them in the comments below. I do my best to answer them as quickly as I can, but bear in mind I get inundated with questions every day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.